This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for any of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today I'm gonna crush your dreams with my nihilistic negativity for the millionth time. You're, uh, you're welcome. Honestly, anyone who still expects anything else from me after this long is just setting themselves up for failure. You should know better. But to be more specific, today we're gonna be talking about the top five reasons that, in my opinion, you shouldn't start a YouTube channel. These points are based on the biggest things that I've learned over the past two years of working on my own, both things that I expected but underestimated the significance or impact of, and the things that I didn't expect and didn't definitely wish I had known before starting. I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking for advice on starting their own channels, asking what it's like to run one, asking if I would recommend getting into art commentary, speed paints and the like, and so on. And after learning everything I have, I have a lot of different answers to those questions. Enough to make a video about, so I am. And no, I'm not saying YouTube sucks and you should never follow your dreams and make a channel, be it an art channel or something else altogether, if that is, in fact, your dream. But I am saying that if any of these five reasons not to would be problems for you, it might be a good idea to reconsider. But before we get into that, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building and hosting platform, and honestly, at this point, after using it for months, running my art studio on it, and switching my whole personal portfolio over to it, they don't have my endorsement because they're paying me to talk about them. They have my endorsement because I love them. I would give them my kidneys if they asked. They've made my life so much easier to the point that I actually enjoyed building my sites with their templates and tools, and that's a process that normally makes me want to lay down on the sidewalk, stare at the sky, and regretfully ponder the horrible life choices that led me to that moment. If you're an artist who wants to display their work on a portfolio that looks clean and professional and is actually easy and fun to create, Squarespace is for you. They have so many gallery options that you can pretty much show your art in whatever way you could possibly want, and it's ridiculously easy to organize them into individual separate galleries for each type of art that you want to display, which makes it simple and straightforward for your potential clients to find examples of the exact type of work that they're interested in hiring you for. Their automatic image scaling means that you don't have to waste any time resizing or cropping your art just to make it look right, and you can even turn your site into an online store with Squarespace's e-commerce and print-on-demand integration. So you can do more than just share your art with the world. You can also put it on cool merch and sell it at the same time. Just use Squarespace. It's free to try out and see if it's a good fit for you, and I'm genuinely confident that it will be. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and if you're looking for the right platform to build your website, no matter what it may be, please go check out squarespace.com now to get a free trial to do so. And once you have, go to squarespace.com slash Duchess Celestia to get 10% off your first domain purchase. Now, all that aside, let's get into the video. Welcome to Duchess Celestia Crushes Your Dreams in the very first month of the new year, assuming your dreams are to start a YouTube channel and actually enjoy it anyway. Again, I can't stress enough right away that I am not saying that if you really want to start a YouTube channel, you should never do it. All I am saying is that based on what I've learned since starting mine, there are a handful of pretty significant reasons that you might not find starting your own as awesome and rewarding as you think it will be, that you should be aware of before getting started. But even if some or all of those reasons do end up sounding like they could be problems for you, if you're really passionate about wanting to start a channel, I still think it's worth giving it a shot and seeing if it would work for you anyway. There is nothing to lose by trying other than a little time and effort, and there absolutely is a lot to be gained if it turns out that you are able to get past these problems and still really enjoy making videos on YouTube. The point of this video isn't really to discourage everyone who wants to start a channel from ever trying to. It's just to warn those who are considering it about some potential problems that they may face if they do so, so that they're as aware and informed about what to expect as possible. And as always, these are just my opinions and experiences. Other creators may have entirely different ones, and you might not experience any of these issues yourselves, or at least you might not find them as problematic or detrimental as I have. So take all of this with the usual grain of salt. Anyway, I'll drop all the preamble now. I'm sure that was already enough to warrant at least 45 comments saying, she finally shuts up and talks about the topic at whatever timestamp we're at now. You're welcome. Which kind of brings me to the first reason you should shouldn't start a channel, actually, and that is that if you're someone who is particularly sensitive to hate and constant criticism, it will probably not be a positive experience for you. It's no secret that the internet is an inherently toxic and vitriolic place where negativity thrives and hate comments are subsequently an omnipresent inevitability. The internet being full of assholes is something that I'm pretty sure even newborn babies come out of the womb already knowing, to the point that toxicity is basically one of the core points that defines the internet by now. It basically said, fostering hate 
negativity is all just a part of my charm and decided to wear it like a badge of honor, and I know everyone already knows that. So I know that all of you listening already know, to some extent, that based on that, creators on YouTube subsequently face a lot of hate comments just by posting their content on the internet. It's something that most creators regularly discuss and acknowledge, and it's something that because of that, I thought I was pretty thoroughly prepared for when I started my channel. But honestly, I cannot overstate how different it is to be aware of how hateful the internet can be, rather than actually experiencing it firsthand constantly, day in and day out. You can know that fire is hot and be prepared for it to hurt to get burnt by it, but you'll still be surprised by how much it really f***ing hurts if you actually throw yourself into one. And I use this analogy because YouTube is basically just one big dumpster fire. That's a joke, obviously, I mean, I do actually like it here, and I do acknowledge that it's a great platform to experiment with content creation and reach an audience that likes the same stuff you do and everything else, but I can like YouTube and be grateful for my platform on it while still thinking it's a dumpster fire. That's my right as a creator. Anyway, my point is, even if you're fully aware of and prepared for the fact that starting a channel will mean getting hate comments, you might not be prepared for what it's actually like to get them all the time. And I do mean all the time. Yes, you'll end up finding a lot of really kind, supportive people who like what you make and support you in your content. And a lot of them will share incredibly lovely comments that make you feel uplifted and encouraged and excited to make more content. I don't mean to imply that you'll get nothing but hate if you start a channel. For every hate comment, there are going to be a hundred kind ones, and then probably 50 meme ones from the self-proclaimed gods of comedy, and then 10 spam ones advertising the sexy European girlfriends you'll definitely probably maybe find on their super cool legit site if you just click this very 100% safe link. But those are irrelevant. And especially when your channel is still very small, you'll probably receive very few hate comments compared to the number of kind ones. The vast majority will be from people who actually like you in your videos, not people helpfully informing you that you were a mistake that your parents probably regret making. But the more your channel grows, the more hate you'll receive, and it will become a very regular part of your life. It's similar to the whole culture surrounding reviews. Like, if you order something on Amazon and you like the product you receive, you're probably not gonna care a whole hell of a lot about leaving a review just to say, yeah, it's it's what I ordered, I like it. If you order something on Amazon and it arrives broken, shitty, or not at all as pictured, you're gonna be pissed. And as a result, you're probably gonna be way more motivated to leave a negative review to express that. Human beings just tend to be way more likely to put in the effort required to share negative opinions than positive ones, and that inclination combined with the fact that the internet is a place where they can do so completely anonymously, where those opinions can be shared without ever being traced back to the person sharing them or having any resulting consequences for them, it means that people who don't like you or your content will pretty constantly and harshly tell you so, usually without any consideration for the fact that you are, in fact, a real person. And it's not just your content that they're gonna tear to shreds, either. It's literally everything about you. Every aspect of yourself that you include in the videos you post on your channel is liable to be completely demolished by the constant hate comments that you will inevitably start getting every day if your channel grows. And people will scrutinize every single thing you do. Everything you are. These are people that want to hate you, and nothing you do will ever be good enough to please them. They're people who will interpret everything you do, say, and are in bad faith. Like, the worst faith possible. I once had someone say that because I didn't mention that artists could improve without constructive criticism in my video on unsolicited critique, I was deliberately shaming and demeaning self-study and every single artist who has ever improved without critique, and that it was shocking and disgusting of me to do. It couldn't be that that just wasn't what I was talking about, or that I forgot to mention that one particular point. It has to be that I'm being deliberately malicious. It, it's just all very, oh, you like pancakes, so you hate waffles? I had someone else comment on every single video I posted asking when I was bringing back art contests, and when I finally gave up and answered them to try to get them to stop, and said, I cancelled them because I don't have the time or money to keep doing them or make sure they're judged fairly, as I already said in a video, so I'm not bringing them back. They then kindly informed me that I was disgusting, money grabbing, and just using my audience for cash and views because I wasn't willing to spend $300 and 20 hours a month that I didn't have to keep running art contests. When people like these assholes decide they hate you, they also decide to see everything you do as bad or malicious because it suits their narrative and helps them justify hating you. Because they can't just not like you and not watch you. They have to hate you for being a terrible person, so they subsequently have to create a million reasons that you are, and they have to tell you and others about it. So if you're planning on making a channel, be prepared for the fact that there will not only be constant hate comments, there will be constant hate comments from people who will deliberately and constantly misinterpret everything you do in bad faith and twist your actions, words, and entire personality to fit those bad faith interpretations. To those people, you won't be a human being who may have just made an 
honest mistake or even literally done nothing wrong to begin with. You'll be a villain behind a screen that it is their duty to demonize and by God, they will. And again, it's not just your content that's gonna be hated on in the comments, it's everything about you. If you show your face, your appearance is gonna get hate. If you use your voice, people will insult it. If you tell a joke, someone will tell you it's bad and you're not funny. I even once had someone tell me that the way I breathe is so unbearable that they can't watch my content. And if you're planning on making an art channel where you show your art, be it in the form of speed paints or something else, you know people are gonna tear that apart too. Actually, as a, a fun little experiment, in my video talking about why unsolicited critique is a unilaterally unhelpful and harmful practice and ultimately just a dick move, I included a speed paint of a piece with a big focus on faces, something that I'm the worst at when it comes to my art, just to see if people would completely miss the point of the video and give me unsolicited critique on it. Surprising exactly no one, I did, in fact, get a bunch of comments shitting on my art and specifically offering unsolicited critique about how I draw faces. It was honestly the funniest shit ever. I had a great time. But the point is that art channels specifically will face a lot of hate for the quality and subject matter of their art, regardless of what they draw or how well they draw it. So that's something to take into consideration too. Ultimately, my point in bringing up this reason isn't to say that you shouldn't start a YouTube channel because you're gonna get hate. You're pretty much gonna get hate anywhere on the internet, and you shouldn't let that hold you back from doing things you wanna do. My point is that if you're a very sensitive person who already struggles with their self-esteem and isn't able to brush comments like those off easily or handle constant scrutiny and criticism, they might make running a channel a very difficult, emotionally taxing experience for you. Personally, I've never really been someone who cared much what people think of me or say about me, so it's never been a particularly big problem for me. But I will admit that even for someone like me who doesn't struggle with that, it does wear you down eventually and get to you sometimes, especially when your channel grows and you start getting more and more hate. It gets harder to ignore when it's so constant and often so cruel, and it can lead to a lot of anxiety when it comes to reading or engaging with comments. Like, when a video of mine does particularly well and starts reaching a wider audience than normal as a result, it's pretty much just instant dread for me, because I know that with that wider reach will inevitably come a much wider range of hate comments too. And it's not like I believe those comments or even really consider them for longer than it takes me to read them if I read them at all. It's not like someone commenting, hey, you're a piece of shit and a waste of oxygen is gonna take me aback and make me suddenly think, oh my god, they're right. Larry Everyman 6969 has opened my ignorant eyes to my own lack of value as a human being. I must indeed be a piece of shit. Guess I'll stop breathing. These comments literally mean nothing to me, and the vast majority of them actually make me laugh in all honesty, and I'm thinking of following in abroad in Japan's footsteps and making videos reading out my favorite hate comments and having a good chuckle at their expense. It's not so much the contents of the comments that are so emotionally exhausting, it's the fact that regardless of what they're saying, they're just basically constantly surrounding you with negativity, whether you like it or not, and that can just get really tiring and demotivating, and even suffocating. But anyway, if you are more sensitive than I am, and you do struggle to dismiss that negative negativity and hate, I would seriously reconsider making a channel, because it could be incredibly damaging if you're someone who might actually end up taking those comments to heart and being legitimately hurt by them. Anyway, reason number two kind of goes hand in hand with that. If you really want people to like you and your content to the point that your self-worth and enjoyment of your own content creation is dependent on people liking it, you probably shouldn't make a channel, at least in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with wanting people to like a video that you put a lot of time and effort and passion into, obviously, but if your only reason for making that video at all is because you want your audience's praise and approval and you yourself will only like that video if it performs well, it's gonna lead to a lot of disappointment and a very unhealthy relationship with both the platform and your own content. This is for two main reasons, and the first is that as I've already mentioned, not only will you inevitably receive a lot of hate comments that are very far from the praise you're seeking, you won't just get the thoughtless trolls saying haha you suck and deliberately misinterpreting you and your content in bad faith because they're assholes. You'll also get completely valid well-meaning people that just don't like you. They don't have to like you. What you make will never appeal to everyone, and who you are as a person and creator will never appeal to everyone either. So if one of your main goals in starting a channel is to have most or all of the people who watch your content like both it and you and say so, you're gonna be sorely disappointed on a regular basis because both haters and completely reasonable people are gonna share the fact that they don't pretty regularly. Yes, a lot of people may very well end up liking you, but others won't, and that's unavoidable 
unavoidable. And if you're the kind of person who needs other people to like you in order for you to like yourself or for other people to like your content in order for you to like it, this is gonna hurt you a lot and it might leave your self-esteem taking pretty regular hits. The other reason making your channel because you primarily want you and your content to be liked is a problem is because that will have an incredibly significant impact on your content itself. What I mean is that if your priority is making content that will be well received rather than content that you enjoy, the content creation process is not gonna be fun for you because you'll likely end up going one of two ways. One, you'll make content that you actually want to make, but because of the fickleness of the algorithm and audience viewing habits, it might not end up being as well liked as content that's tailored to be more popular, and you'll be emotionally crushed constantly. Or conversely, you'll make exclusively content that you think will be popular, and maybe it will be, but you won't enjoy making it because it's not what you wanted to make in the first place, and you'll end up burnt out and disillusioned. Successful in the algorithm, maybe, but probably not happy. And it can already be incredibly painful and conflicting to be torn between making content that you yourself love and content that you think will perform well. So if on top of that, you're someone whose self-worth is completely or at least largely dependent on your videos being well-liked and getting a lot of views, it'll only get harder to handle. If videos not performing well is something that would regularly and deeply upset or demotivate you, I would not recommend starting a channel on YouTube because some videos tanking is a very regular part of running one and some people blatantly disliking you and your content is too. You can never make content that pleases everyone and you're never going to be happy with the content you make if you try to please them all anyway. This is especially true because as a creator, nothing you make will ever be good enough for some people. Like I said, I spent $300 and 20 hours every month running art contests on my channel and people complained so much that community vote wasn't a good enough judging method that I had to stop because I didn't have the resources to feasibly devote to any alternative. That's just one example. If I swear, people complain. If I censor myself, people complain. If I avoid swearing altogether, people say I'm a corporate sellout now. If I use the time-lapse feature to record my speed paints, it's not capturing enough detail. If I use screen recording, the necessary speeding it up for the videos makes it too fast to follow. If I ask for support on Ko-fi or Patreon, people tell me to get a job, but when my channel grows enough to get sponsorships that let me make it my job, people complain that I have sponsor segments. If I make a 10 minute video, it's too short and I'm not putting in enough effort, but if I make a 40 minute video, I'm told that no one is willing to sit through all that. If I put music in the background, it's way too loud and no one can hear me and it's the most annoying thing in the world. And if I make the music quieter, people complain that they can't hear it well enough. There is literally no pleasing some people, even those of them who do like your content. And there will always be people demanding more from you than you can give, and a level of perfection that you can't achieve. So going into YouTube with the goal of being liked and receiving as much positive feedback as possible is just setting yourself up for failure in so many ways. In conclusion of reason number two, I passionately feel that the best way to approach content creation on YouTube is to make videos you want to make, that you love, and that you're proud of, regardless of how your audience feels about it. And I'm not naive. I'm not saying just make content that you love and you'll succeed. You do have to cater to what people want to see sometimes, and you have to tailor your content to audience interests to some extent to find success. But there's a delicate balance there that should be maintained. Like, you should make content that you like first and foremost, even if of those content ideas, you prioritize the topics and ideas that you think will perform well. You should never, in my opinion, make content exclusively because you think your audience will like it, even if you don't care about it or want to make it. You caring about it and wanting to make it should be a prerequisite. I guess what I mean is that if you make a channel, I think the healthiest mindset to have about it is that your videos shouldn't be made to please your audience. They should be made to please you and marketed and refined to please others. So don't try to please everyone, but please as many people as you can in the process of pleasing yourself, which doesn't sound good. I really hope that doesn't get me demonetized. We'll see. Moving on. The third reason you shouldn't make a YouTube channel is the sheer amount of time, effort, and dedication that it takes. And in terms of this point, I don't mean this in relation to people who just treat YouTube as a hobby and occasionally upload a video whenever they have time or an idea, without a schedule or any intention of pursuing it seriously or trying to grow a platform. If you're just uploading whatever you want, whenever you want, for fun, you don't need to worry about the amount of time it takes because there's no pressure for you to post content when you don't have time to. But if you do want to do YouTube seriously and professionally, you do need to post at least somewhat regularly, which means you need to devote a significant amount of time to actually making your videos. And I feel like a lot of people underestimate exactly how much time that takes, because it's never just what you expect it to be. When I started my channel, I thought making a video would be coming up with a few talking points, recording audio of myself talking about all of those points, recording a speed paint, and putting them all together. In reality, making a video on my channel means spending several days researching it, if it's a topic that requires that, spending at least one day writing a 5 to 15 page script for it, recording myself narrating that script, editing out all of the times that I f***ed up narrating 
that script, editing the audio itself to sound vaguely passable, finishing one full art piece in a day so that I have a speed paint to use in that week's video, and then compiling that speed paint with the audio, intro, outro, music, sponsor segments, and then manually matching up my sprites to everything I'm saying in real time, and then exporting and uploading the unlisted video with 48 hours to spare for sponsors to approve and or request revisions for once a week. And YouTube is not all I do for a living. I also take commissions, do marketing consultations, sell paintings, do translation work, run my store, create new merch for that store, and work on my webcomic and game development. So it's on top of all of that too. And that doesn't even take into consideration how much time went into learning the skills necessary to do this and creating the assets necessary to do it. Like the amount of time I spent learning how to use Adobe Audition and Adobe Premiere Pro just to edit audio and video alone was ridiculous. And the amount of time spent making all of my stills, overlays, intro and outro segments, and finding and commissioning background music, also ridiculous. And then there's the learning curve of figuring out how to make this schedule work, how to narrate a script properly, how to even write and pace a script vaguely passively, how to record a speed paint, how to troubleshoot video rendering errors, how to work with sponsors, how to make a compelling video title and thumbnail. There are just, there are a million new skills that you're gonna have to learn to make content that I guarantee you, you are not prepared for. And you're gonna have to invest so much of your time and energy and effort into your channel in order for it to succeed. So if you don't have the time and energy and effort or aren't willing to devote it to your channel, especially when doing so might mean sacrificing time spent on hobbies and leisure, I would not recommend making a YouTube channel, at least not one that you're pursuing seriously, because it requires a huge investment in that regard. And other types of content may well require even more. Like if you use a face cam in your content, you not only need to invest in a good camera, you need to learn how to use it, you need to learn how to edit video in an entirely new way, and how to hold yourself in front of a camera and make it look like you're not reading a script, and how to make the lighting flattering, and so much more. And gaming? You have to figure out what your computer will be able to handle in terms of frame rate and resolution while also recording your audio, and maybe video too, and how to be entertaining while also playing the game well. And any kind of comedy content? You need to learn how to edit to be funnier, and how much of a clip you can insert for comedy's sake without getting into trouble with copyrights, and what words need to be censored to avoid demonetization. And true crime? Don't even get me started. The point is, making a channel will 100% hands down be way more work than you think it will be. And if you're not willing or able to put that work and time in, you probably shouldn't. Reason number four that you shouldn't make a YouTube channel is pretty much exclusively for those of you who want to make it your job. If you want to make a YouTube channel for fun because you just want to make videos regardless of whether or not you're going to be able to make any money from them, this reason will not apply to you. It's really only relevant to people who want to make a channel that they hope will eventually turn into their career. And for those of you that do, the fourth reason you shouldn't make a channel is that if you hate marketing and only want to make content that you want to make without any regard for what viewers want to see, you're probably going to end up pretty miserable. To elaborate on that further, as I've already mentioned, in order to succeed on YouTube while still making content you like, you have to find a balance between making content that you personally want to make and making content that people will want to watch. And that's just an inevitability that you'll eventually have to accept. So if you only ever want to make videos that you want to make because you want to make them and you don't ever want to consider whether or not someone else might want to watch it, you might have a hard time on YouTube. If it's your hobby, again, you probably won't and this section isn't really for you, but if it's something that you want to pursue professionally or seriously to any degree, you probably will. Because the reality of the situation is that the content that you're the most passionate about probably won't do anywhere near as well as the content that's tailored to what people within your community are interested in and talking about. Since I already mentioned Chris's channel once, let me bring him up again. Abroad in Japan discussed this in one of his videos, where, if I remember correctly, he talks about how he spent a huge amount of time and energy and passion making a documentary-esque video exploring the abandoned urban areas overtaken by nature in Fukushima, because it was something that he was deeply passionate about. And compared to his videos about what not to do in Japan, or what Japanese women find attractive in a partner, it completely tanked. It still got more views than I get in a year, but compared to the aforementioned videos, it tanked. And it's because videos that appeal to the widest range of viewers do the best, and that's usually not the type of content that you're gonna be most passionate about as a creator. Like, Chris's channel is primarily focused on Japanese culture, specifically from the perspective of a foreigner living there. As a result, both video topics would appeal to him as a creator, those topics being the exploration of Fukushima post-nuclear aftermath, and a list of 26 things Japanese women find attractive in a man. But one of those things would only appeal to a small subsection of his viewers, while the other would be appealing to not just the majority of his viewers, but even a significant portion of viewers that weren't even subscribed to his channel. And he openly acknowledged that in order to succeed on YouTube, he has to make the content like the latter that brings people to his channel and gets them interested too. And that really is the bottom line here. Neither he nor I are saying that you need to make content you're not interested in because you think viewers are going to want to watch it. 
but what we are saying is that, as I mentioned before, you will sometimes need to effectively make a list of the content ideas that you are interested in turning into videos, and then prioritizing the ones that you think people will watch more over the ones that you might be more personally passionate about. And if you don't want to do that, number one, I completely respect and admire that. I wish I had the integrity to prioritize only the content that I want to make the most at all times. But I do also think that you should reconsider making a YouTube channel into your long-term professional goal, because it's just not feasible, at least in my opinion. And finally, the fifth reason that you probably shouldn't make a YouTube channel is really just a culmination of everything I've already said, that you're not prepared for the downsides of doing so, or that you haven't fully analyzed exactly what those downsides might be for you. YouTube as a job, to many, seems like a dream job, but there are a lot of aspects of it that are not nearly as glamorous or even tolerable as they seem to be from the outside looking in. People don't realize exactly how much sucks about running a channel, and I say that as someone who actively chooses to anyway after learning all of those things. So I don't mean to be ungrateful or dismissive of the platform's value despite those downsides. But I started my channel thinking I was prepared for all of the things that would suck about running it, and I was sorely, sorely mistaken, so I feel like a lot of you might be too. I mean, off the top of my head, here's a handful of things that I wasn't expecting to suck quite this hard. Number one, your income, if you make it your job, will be wildly inconsistent. It's heavily dependent on ad revenue, which means you have to rely on advertisers wanting to advertise on YouTube as a platform at all. So, I mean, you'll have more income in December during the Christmas season than half of the rest of the year. And, more frighteningly, you'll be dependent on the ad suitability of your content, which in and of itself is terrifying. Because if you say f too many times, and don't worry, YouTube will never tell you how many is too many, so it's a complete guessing game. A video that you spent 40 hours making will now be ineligible to make you any money. You say one word that is secretly blacklisted by the algorithm, age restricted and demonetized. Video gets way less views than anticipated? Good luck paying rent! Sponsorships help a great deal, but they're still based on sponsors being interested in your channel at all, which is a difficult feat to achieve when you're still small like me. And then you have to deal with commenting that you're an annoying, cringe sellout for endorsing something that you actually do believe in, just because they couldn't handle listening to 45 to 90 seconds worth of advertisement, just so that you, the creator who made this entire video for free, for them, could pay their bills. And that's just the financial side. Number two, people will get way too passionate about you, one way or the other. Some people will be weirdly devoted to you to the point that they're parasocially obsessed with you and want your attention no matter the cost, and will message you and stalk you indefinitely because they want, more than anything, to be a part of your life. They'll find your address, your family, your friends, and they'll use all of that to try to connect with you. Other people will hate you so much that they'll find the same information and use it to threaten you, because if you express any kind of opinion on the internet, someone, somewhere, will disagree with you enough to want to cause you bodily harm. And they'll be in your DMs via a burner account telling you what they want to do to you, and it won't be good. People, at least people who engage with your content, may very well become a terrifying, intimidating part of your life rather than a positive one, and you'll end up dreading comments and DMs rather than hoping for or looking forward to them. Number three, marketing will become a gigantic gigantic, unavoidable part of your life, and you'll have to implement clickbait and marketing psychology in every part of what you post. You can't title a video, Why DeviantArt is Losing Its Dedicated User Base Despite Years of Success, even though it's still the only major art-based social media platform, or have a thumbnail with just your art and that title. You have to call it, Is DeviantArt Dead? With a thumbnail focus of DA's logo on a tombstone and a reactive sprite. That's why I renamed my original video to that and changed the thumbnail. It's a true story, although in fairness, I don't actually remember what the original title title was, that was an exaggeration. My point is, you constantly have to try to find new and creative ways of enticing people to click on your video, and trust me, they don't feel great. I would much rather use the most accurate title possible with a thumbnail that's just the art that I made in the video, but that is not what gets people to click it, and if people don't click it, your channel will never grow. So you have to constantly be questioning, how do I make this thing that I want to talk about palatable to a wider audience than would normally be interested in it? And you have to constantly evolve your skills in marketing it to that wider audience. It's not just making content you like. It's also basically trying to sell it to more people than would, by nature, be interested in it. If one single person sees this video that has no interest in art commentary, despite the fact that art commentary is what my channel is about, I did that job well. But I hate that that's even a part of this job, and a lot of people very reasonably do. Another thing that sucks about doing YouTube professionally, long term, is that community interaction basically dies. When I started my channel, I answered every single comment I got on every single video, positive or negative. All of them made me excited, and I had the time to 
to answer all of them. Now, not only do I not have the time to read or answer every single comment, I'm afraid of most comments because of just how many of them are hateful, threatening, or cruel. I'm scared of significantly large influxes of comments because I know at least 20 or 30% of them will be insulting me because I'm not a real person to the people leaving them. I feel legitimate increases in anxiety as a result of large numbers of incoming YouTube video comments because of the sheer number of them that I've received and deleted that hatefully insult every aspect of me as a human being or legitimately threaten my safety. And that's just the comments, not the emails or the DMs. There are obviously a lot of emails and DMs that I receive that are so kind, considerate, passionate, and overwhelmingly positive too. I just, I am so grateful for those. But the reason I don't respond to any of them anymore is because of how many are hateful, threatening, cruel, and genuinely frightening. And I'm deeply afraid at this point of responding to anything that might open the door to that kind of hate. I'm scared to answer even the kindest of comments and DMs. And obviously, yes, that is partially because of my anxiety and PTSD. But even people without those disorders may well experience a lot of similar stress because of how mean and horrible strangers will be to them online, just because they had the audacity to post their content there. And they're completely valid in feeling that way. A lot of YouTubers, myself included, will start with a community that they're genuinely excited to interact with and end up with a community that they want to interact with but are too scared to because of the cruelty directed at them by those within that community that are more interested in spreading senseless vitriolic threats and insults than support or even constructive criticism. Another downside people don't talk about enough on YouTube is that even if you start out making the exact kind of content you want to make, that you truly love making, you will still probably end up pigeonholed into a niche of content that people expect of you on your channel, and you will probably end up wishing that you could create new types of content that don't fall within that niche, because you're either bored of what you're making now, or because your interests have just evolved and changed and you want to make content that reflects that. But you won't be able to without your channel suffering, because it's not what you built it making. Personally, while I love art commentary, I really wish I could start making content analyses of games and shows, creepypasta narration, true crime content, even gaming with my wife. And I really can't do any of that on this channel without losing subscribers, views, and support, because none of that falls into the niche of content that I've built it on. It's not impossible to make it work. You can branch out a little, and you can always start side channels, which is my eventual plan. But side channels need to get like a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time just to be monetized. So you pretty much have to start over just to make any vague semblance of money from what you're making if you do that. It can just be very disappointing, demoralizing, and suffocating sometimes. And there will probably be days, weeks, and even months where you end up feeling trapped by your own content. And that's truly just a tiny, tiny handful of the downsides that I can think of offhand that come from seriously and professionally pursuing a YouTube channel. I really do mean it when I say that you should thoroughly and deeply look into the shitty parts of being a content creator before throwing yourself into it. Because like any job, there are many. I was sure at age 13 that being a barista was the dream job. And then from like 15 to 17, I was one. And I realized that the downsides were nowhere near worth the glamorous parts that I thought would be so much fun as a spectator. YouTube, honestly, has been no different. It's just that I happen to be the kind of person who can find those downsides bearable, especially when compared to the value of the upsides. The reason I'm making this video is that I want to warn people, just like me, of those downsides, so that they can decide, with as much information as possible, whether or not it's still a career that's worth it to them before they commit themselves to it. Personally, I'm glad I pursued YouTube. None of the cons that I've listed so far make this job not worth it to me, but they might for others, and I definitely wish I would have been more prepared for them before I committed to this career. So I do think it's important to talk about them, especially after hearing from so many people who have asked for my opinion on the viability of YouTube-based careers or whether or not I think people should use the platform for their content. And that finally brings me to the end of this ridiculously long script. Please let me know in the comments what you guys think about whether or not YouTube is a viable career option for both artists and those in other fields of content creation. Because I'm sure you all have vastly differing opinions from vastly differing perspectives, and I genuinely find that both interesting and valuable to hear about. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did. Special thank you as always to channel members Cafe Soleil, Joseph Solomon, Lotus Dreams Art, and Luna Nordberg, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, Unity, Cora Fear, Jabisha Walker, Alengshi, Soul Crystal, Kim Nguyen, Shamil Sheep, Gen Tong, Jacobus Peterson, Grayson Xavier, Ty Finch 94, Jasper, and Eeyore Hee Haw for their support, and I'll see you in the next one.